I'm going to ask one question of you. Who here has been to East Liverpool, Ohio? I, I'm ashamed of you all. <laughs> It is hugely, hugely important, but totally forgotten. In the Boston Athenaeum last week, two people had been in a bookstore in St. Louis. One person had been. One of the most important laws of the early United States, a profoundly important law, 1785, the Land Ordinance, backed by Thomas Jefferson, who had this deep-seated belief that Americans ought to be able to own the land that they were settling on. In Britain, up to that point, the old Anglo-Saxon tradition was that it was the king, the aristocracy, the church that owned the land. The ordinary people were merely tenants. But Jefferson said everything could be different. And this goes into the whole view of American exceptionalism. If ordinary Americans could be allowed to buy and own land, I'm buying it for nominal amounts of money. And so the 1785 ordinance was passed. And this was the deal. But in order to own land, the land, you've got to know where the land is. You've got to parcel it out. You've got to create sections, townships, ranges. I mean, whenever you fly across this country, you look, once you get west of the Mississippi, particularly those straight lines. I don't know if you look out of the window and count them, because you know they're a mile apart and how fast the plane is going. It's easy to calculate. And that system extends from in Iowa and Nebraska and Kansas and Arizona. It's everywhere, all these straight north and south lines. Well, those north and south lines had to begin somewhere. And the place they begin is in East Liverpool, Ohio, which is a forlorn, broken down town. It used to be, most of you, I dare say, have got products of East Liverpool because it used to be the crockery capital of America. Most plates and cups and saucers in America were made there. Now it's forlorn, it's, there's only one pottery making a kiln there. If pottery rusted, it would be part of the rust belt. It is a forlorn former industrial city. But if you drive into Pennsylvania from it, and it's on the Ohio River at the junction of Pennsylvania, Ohio, and a little sliver of West Virginia, beside the road, covered with litter, completely disregarded, is an obelisk. And that obelisk is known as the point of beginning. And it's where the first and indeed only American geographer, a man called Thomas Hutchins, appointed by Jefferson, started the first surveys of the land west of the Ohio River. And it strikes me that the point of beginning, which is covered with graffiti, it's, there's litter, there's nothing. It's just by an industrial um, a warehouse for fracking material. It deserves to have a visitor center, an interpretive center, parking for buses. Every child in Eastern America should be taken there because the point of beginning of this country says something hugely important about the construction and indeed later unification of this country.